free. They have every right to protest and to march. Yeah, I just just want to be sure you guys know that's a Supreme Court case. Okay. So that's going to be the 1963 case of South Carolina versus Edwards. And what you're looking at here is you're looking at a protest for the war. So they're, they're just going down and they're, they're protesting and the police were observing them. And I just wanted to let the police know that the 1963 case, I believe it was 63, South Carolina versus Edwards, is going to allow the right to protest. And the police don't, what the cops said is that they were making sure that nobody ran them over. And so, you know, Everybody has a right to protest in America because of South Carolina versus Edwards. That case solidified that we have the right to, to protest. We have that God-given right. That, and, and just so you know, you know, the Supreme Court of America, they don't create rights for us. You don't get rights created by a, by a court in America. The way that you have your rights in the United States of America, the way that our rights are recognized here, is our rights are recognized because of, let me flip this around real quick. Our recognized because, because we have the uh, a fifth, we have a, a, a first amendment right to, to have speech, to, to religion, press, assembly, and petition. And those first five big rights are huge. So when you see police watching protesters, you always want to stop and film the police and just find out exactly what they're doing and why they're doing it. You want to make sure that you always watch the cops. Always, always, always. I mean, now I hear sirens coming and I hope that they're not coming for peaceful protesters. No, it's a fire truck, so it, I don't think that they're coming for the peaceful protesters because these people here, they have every right to protest. Their, their rights to protest are unequivocal. And I use the word unequivocal quite a bit because it's, it's super important that you understand what unequivocal means. It means without question, beyond all doubt, unequivocal. We unequivocally recognize your right to protest. And so that means that people have a, a God-given right to protest. And these people here are peacefully protesting that Russia uh, is invading Ukraine. And so they have that God-given right. And this God-given right is only going to be recognized in South Carolina versus Alabama. So when you see a cop trailing protesters, you want to make sure that you film that cop. You always want to make sure that you film that cop. You don't want the cops to infringe on the rights of people who are peacefully protesting. You don't need a permit to protest. You don't have to go down and get a, 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 a license from your government. You don't have to ask permission. There's no permission needed to do what is considered a God-given right. It's God-given. So when you talk about the Supreme Court, and I want to be clear on this because on the trifold here, I'm, they're, they're, saying, they're, they're, they're chanting, stop Hitler. That's what they're chanting, stop Hitler. That's what they're chanting. So now these are fire trucks, but these fire trucks these fire trucks are not attached to, to the, 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 the protest here. So these folks are protesting. No war, no war. No war, no war. I'm with you all the way. No war. Now 
I got that copper behind me, and I wonder if he's going to give me a hard time for, for following the protest and producing it, uh, producing a little bit for them so that they can be recognized, because everybody needs to be recognized. If you want to take the mantle and go out into the world and protest, you have every single right to do so. And don't let anybody ever detour you or ever stop you from protesting. And what we do as persons of justice, and right now I definitely would be a person because what I'm doing is I'm showing, I'm showing that we have, there you go, there you go. Big support, big support. Listen to all the people honking in support that there shouldn't be a war. Americans are against war. Support Ukraine, no war. So what you guys are looking at is this, 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 uh, this impromptu. These these folks. To, I'm heading that way in one second. peacefully assembling. So this falls under your First Amendment right. Just remember that, your First Amendment right. You have a First Amendment right to protest. It, it, it's included in your First Amendment right. This is under your right to assemble of the big five rights of your First Amendment. So all of these folks are peacefully assembling and peacefully protesting. And that right is gonna be solidified in the 1963 case of South Carolina versus Edwards lots of people so now that cop's standing right behind me he's standing right behind me so i wonder if he's going to try to give me a ticket for driving with my camera on but what i'm going to do right onto north alexandria avenue i'm going to take a right here and see if i get any flack here so there that is continue now, on north alexandria avenue for three quarters of a mile now we shall see I, i'm actually driving out of town right now i'm, I'm taking off i'm leaving l.a I'm just going over to to I'm going over to pick up the trifold, the the final sample to make sure it's ready to be shipped on Monday. That's what I'm doing right now. So we should have that trifold shipping out on Monday to about a hundred different people. So it, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's really good. That cop is not behind me. He was standing right behind me as I had my camera out my window and I was filming. And I, you know, I don't, I don't want to get a ticket just for no reason, but it wouldn't be beyond me, you know, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that real estate brokers video. He sent me a video of, of the cops grabbing him, attacking him and beating him up, breaking his bones. And then because he just said something to the cop, the DA there where he's from, I'm not going to reveal it yet because I said I wouldn't to the gentleman. But the DA there, what they did is they prosecuted his case. And so because I saw that and he sent me the video, I'm going to do an expose on it just to show what happens if the police charge you with a crime. So, you know, as you guys know, I have a new system of policing that I've created. I'm going to unveil it in Minneapolis this next month. But um, what happens is, is the reason why we need checks and balances on top of checks and balances, the reason we need a checks and balances over the district attorney's office, because when the police randomly attacks somebody, oh, here's my, my visor right here. I got it right at my visor. That's <laughs> so funny. When the police randomly attacks somebody and the guy's outside in front of his place of business where he's getting the property ready to be looked at for sale. In 1,000 feet, turn right. So then what you're looking at is an absolute tyrannical state.
because remember, um, I got a video coming out where I, where, where I dressed up and I made fun of all the YouTubers. So you guys can look forward to that. I got a video coming out where, uh, turn right. It's pretty funny. Turn left. So when, when the police have immunity for beating you up and then this gentleman I'm speaking of the, the real estate broker, and then the real estate broker is arrested and his bones are broken in the process of him being arrested. His bones were broken. And he was arrested for asking the cop to slide down a little bit. He said, hey man, could you have to pull the guy over right in front of my building? And the cop then jumped him. The cops jumped him and beat him up and they broke his bones in the process of jumping him. He was in front of his building, cleaning it up, getting it ready to show, because he's a real estate broker. And turn left. I, I got kind of conjumbled here in Hollywood, so I'm trying to get the heck out of here. I'm supposed to meet the the tech guys in Phoenix right now, so I'm gonna be late. If the tech guys are watching this in Phoenix, I'm gonna be a little bit late, fellas. Sorry, I, I just, as you know, when I see the police trailing people, I just can't help but find out what they're doing and why they're doing it. You know, those people have a right to protest. So this real estate broker sent me his video. He's cleaning up the front of it, getting it ready to rent out or to sell it. The cops pull someone over in front of his building. He goes to the cops and says, man, do you gotta pull him over in front of my building? You know, he's not real friendly about it. Then he goes right back to what he's doing. He's doing the hedges, he's taking the hedges down. And then the cops just attack him. They attack him. And you know, I, I'm a big proponent of wrestling and MMA. I love those sports and the real estate broker is cleaning up his hedges in front of his building and the cops just attack him. Double leg takedown. You know, I teach a double leg. So, so when the cop grabs him and throws him on the ground, he does it with a double leg. He grabs, he grabs both of his hips and he double leg takedowns the real estate broker and the real estate broker goes down. When you, you know, I don't care who you are, if you grab both of someone's legs and you lift them up into the air, they go to the ground if they don't know how to sprawl. If you don't sprawl when someone grabs both of your legs, you're going down. I don't care how big you are. You could be 300 pounds. If I wrap up both your legs and successfully shoot a double, you're going down to the ground. <laughs> you know, for, for people who didn't wrestle throughout high school and college, it's very, very simple. I'm gonna shoot on you, you gotta stop my shot. If you can stop my double leg, then you you know you got a chance. But if you can't stop my double, you're going down. And once you're down on the ground and I'm on top of you, then you gotta stop my power half, and then you gotta stop my leg ride, and then you gotta stop my ground and pound. So this guy's out in front of his property and he's cleaning it up, tells the guys to get the hell out of here. The guy, the cop walks up to him and shoots a double leg. He's not ready for anybody to shoot a double on him. Why would you shoot a double leg takedown on me? I'm cleaning up my building. So the guy sends me the video. He just sent me the police reports and everything. I'm gonna take a look at those tonight when I get into Phoenix. But uh, it's pretty bad all across America. It's pretty bad. We, we have a pretty tyrannical state going on right now all across America. We have a really tyrannical state. It's not just in small towns or big cities. It's across the spectrum. Are you going to stop? If you, oh, you fudger. You fudger. You mother fudger. What, oh, you son of a... Driving in L.A., driving in L.A., driving in L.A. So, any which way, I just wanted to cover that protest. I'll pop back on in a couple hours. I'll be on in a couple hours today because about 2 o'clock, I'm going to show you guys a couple of things that I filmed yesterday. So you guys can take a look at some of the stuff that I did. I'll post up some shorts today. I'll put some short videos up that I made yesterday in that cop outfit so you guys can see exactly the way that cops think and what they believe and, and, and those things. So South Carolina versus Edwards. That's going to be South Carolina versus Edwards, 1963. You have the right to assemble and you have the right to protest. That's South Carolina versus Edwards. But that... Uh, that that real estate broker I'm talking about, I'm going to show you guys his videos as soon as uh, as soon as he gives me the go ahead, and I have a chance to sit down and edit it properly because you can't see the video unless you use some some Premiere Pro. Go ahead, bro. This guy next to me wanted to punch it and go by me. I could just see him; he was revving. So I said, "Okay, dude, go ahead, go by me. I don't really care. I don't really care." 
in in L in LA, you're not going to beat traffic. It, you're not going to beat it. You can try to zip along a little bit here and there, but the truth is, you're not going to beat traffic in Los Angeles. There's no point in really trying to fight it. You're going to be zigging and zagging like a madman. Stuff here, I just can't do that. So, I guess it's going to pop in and out on me because I'm down here. Um, I'm hitting by the ten. So, just so you guys know, when you talk about segregation. Los Angeles, California is the most segregated city in the entire world. In the world. Well, certainly in America. I couldn't speak intelligently on the entire world. There could be places in Ireland that split the factions based on their political ideologies. It's pretty intense over there for a while. But Israel, Israel's not even as separated as much as LA is. So just south of the 10 is all the black folks and north of the 10 is all the white folks here in Los Angeles. So, and then you have a big mix of Asian in between Koreatown. You have all these different people who are gonna mix in here. And as you guys know, I did a pretty long lecture on the Rodney King riots in relationship to the 1967, I always get it confused. It was the 67 Immigration Act or was it the 63 Immigration Act? I think it was written by John F. Kennedy and then the Immigration Act I think passed in 67 or 63. I always confuse it. You guys can look it up and fact check me and let me know. But it was the 1963 or 67 Immigration Act that the intention of the act was to bring over other white European uh, men, to be honest. That's what the act was intended to do. And instead it did the opposite. It said that if you had DNA that you could trace back to lineage that you could trace back and there were so many Irish that came over here during the potato famine um, and so then the Immigration Act of 63 or 67 I gosh dang it it drives me crazy when I can't remember details it was written by JFK I don't think he was alive to see it pass and then they wanted to bring over the European males who were white to get more white blood here and instead, the Korean War, that's a, a really bad, bad, bad war that we did. And then the, the, the occupation and the, what do you call that? The imperialistic measures that we took in, in the Philippines from 18, 1899 till 1912. If you guys didn't know that, that's a little fun fact for you in history that people really don't talk about that's not real popular to talk about. We tried to colonize the Philippines from 1899 to 1912. By the end of Taft's term in office, 1909 to 1912, William Howard Taft, who had previously been governor of the Philippines, I wanna say 1901 to 1905, 1905, something like that. So William Howard Taft, he had previously, <laughs> William Howard Taft, I could go off. Don't let me go off. Let me stay focused on what I'm explaining to you guys. So the Immigration Act, when we occupied the Philippines in those years, those 12, 13 years from 1899 to 1912, we, the, we had set up concentration camps there and we had set up RAPE camps there in the Philippines. And there was so many Filipino women who got pregnant with the with the offspring of American soldiers, that when the Immigration Act passed in 1963 or 67, I can't remember which year, now watch it be 1965. You know what? It is 65. It is 65. It's the 1965 Immigration Act that JFK had written, but he was killed before he could sign it. It lagged through Congress for a couple years. They finally got it signed in 65. God bless America. I knew I would get it eventually if I just kept thinking. So. Then what happened was, if you had a trace of DNA in your bloodline that was American, you could then apply for American citizenship and immediate asylum in the United States. So the Koreans from the Korean War, where we went over there and just killed a bunch of people, and then the Filipinos from the Filipino invasion that we did, when we took, we, we took the Philippines from the, from the, the Seven Day Spanish War when we defeated the Spaniards. And the Spaniards said, okay, fine, we'll give you the Philippines. So we took the Philippines as a payment from Spain. I'm, I'm pretty sure these are the historical facts. And once we took the Philippines and we said, okay, we'll take that as 
the fruit of our bounty from winning this particular war, which was... Then we went over there to colonize the Philippines and we did, I mean, you think that Hitler did bad things. Man, what American troops and what American leadership did to the people of the Philippines from 1899 to 1912, it's some of the darkest, most disgusting history you will ever read. And by the way, it's not easy to find. You really have to look hard to find the Philippines documentation of what we did over there with concentration camps to the Filipino people. But the resolve of the Filipino men, they would not surrender. They would not give up. They absolutely refused. They said, we will not give up our country. And they didn't give it up. And I think, you know, and, and now here's where I'm gonna run a little hazy on my history here. So anybody's open to correct me, I appreciate that. Then when William Howard Taft became president in 1909, they asked Taft to come back and run for president in 1905. And Taft said, no, I'm not gonna come there because I'm governor of the Philippines, an American, a great big fat guy. And by the way, just to be a great big fat guy in 1905, uh, you know, you had to really work at that because we had the, remember, we had the token fat kid here in America in the, in the 80s. You'd watch a movie and there'd be the one fat kid. And then when the Food and Drug Administration, the, the FDA, which I did a long study on this, I'm actually going to reveal it about four years ago. I did a long study on the FDA. The Food and Drug Administration was bought out. They were bought out and paid out by the sugar industry. This is a fact. And so when America became grossly overweight, is when the Food and Drug Administration changed over from the four basic food groups, which one was dairy, the Caroline Products versus United States, 1938, the monopolization of the dairy industry just continued right on through. You know, Caroline Products versus United States in 1938, they're gonna say that's the end of the Lochner era, but it's not, it's absolutely not. If the, the Lochner era ended in 37, then why did the Supreme Court give Caroline Products the dairy industry, Caroline products is about coconut milk in a can and they call it pure milk or unpure milk. Either it's real dairy or it's you know pure dairy or it's not real dairy. And so the Supreme Court then passes what they call strict scrutiny. I'm getting off track here. So the 65 Immigration Act, what that does is it allows anybody who's in the Philippines that has American DNA or anyone who's in Korea who has American DNA access to apply for citizenship and asylum in America. Well, you know, the American troops had carte blanche, and I don't mean that in a nice way. It is what it is. War is hell. And so the American troops had carte blanche in the Philippines and in Korea. And so American men impregnated so many Koreans and Filipinos that that was the cause of the Rodney King riots. That was the cause was that when the Koreans applied for asylum ship and then citizenship here in the United States, they got it. Because they could prove they had DNA from John Smith who was in the, in the Korean War. Please don't do that, don't be stupid lady. It's just ridiculous. Don't drive stupid, you're in LA. So, so then in 65, you had this mass influx here in Los Angeles of Filipinos and Koreans. Now, so the Koreans and the Filipinos, the, the mass immigration from the Philippines and the Koreans is going to get here in 69, 70. So remember, the 60s, uh, the, the civil rights movement as we know it is going to end as quickly as Reconstruction after the 64 and 65 Civil Rights Act because then you, you're still going to have some freedom riders and stuff, but not nearly like you did from 54 to 64. And so then... What's going to happen is, is the Koreans who are going to come to Los Angeles using the 1965 Immigration Act, and I know that's correct now because I had already researched this before and I already messed up my ears before. They come here in mass and what happens is they, they don't have any of the, of the dirt or the drama on them that the black people had from fighting for their civil rights throughout the late 1950s and early 1960s. And so... What's going to happen is, is the Koreans are going to come to L.A. and they're going to occupy a place here that's commonly called Koreatown. And I think that's actually on the map. You can look it up. It's called Koreatown here in L.A. And so what they do, the Koreans, very, very intelligently and, and stealthily, is they create inroads with the rich white people here in L.A.
they do. And so then the government, what they do, the government then gives the Koreans subsidized loans to buy build to buy businesses here in America because they're immigrants. And all throughout, in case you guys didn't know, all throughout the 60s and the 70s, the government gave subsidized loans to anybody who was an immigrant. Because if you remember, 1980 is when we're gonna input the Shah. We're gonna, we're gonna place the Shah as the head of the Iranian government. The CIA causes a coup in Iran, and then we replace the leadership of Iran with today known as the Shah. And you may see the Shah as someone who created the, the conservative Islamic culture over there in Iran, but the American government installed the Shah. And then to what the American government did just to continue to piggy bank on the subsidized loans that the American government gave the Koreans and gave the Filipinos, the Filipinos didn't do nearly as well as the Koreans did as far as getting every single benefit from the government possible, but the Koreans, they really maximized it. And so then in 1980, you have the same thing happen. We cause an overthrow of Iran, and what happens? It goes from this free kind of Western uh, state where people, could, women can dress in bikinis and go to the pool and everything normal, and then what happens instead is when we put the Shah in there, our puppet, he then turns ultra conservative Islamic, and now women have to wear a burqa in Iran. And we did that. The American government did that. The Iran was not like it was before we put our puppet in place, and the puppet ended up being a monster. So to stay focused on the Koreans here in the Rodney King riots, what happened next was the Koreans made inroads, and they didn't have any of that animosity with LAPD that the black community had. And the banks historically throughout the history of America have cheated black people in banking. This is an open fact. You can look it up. Just put into, put into your search engine, whatever one you use, black people are cheated in banking. Just pick a year, pick any decade you want. Go 1880, go 1890, go 1910, go 1930. Any year you pick, black people are cheated by the banking industry fact. So the Koreans get here from the 65 Immigration Act. They make inroads with a bunch of rich white people and they don't have any of that animosity and friction that the black folks had to deal with. None. And so they go down to the banks and they get subsidized loans. And then the Korean people, they buy up large swaths of land through South Central, and those swaths of land that they're buying are the liquor stores and the quickie stores and the 7-Elevens and all those stores throughout South Central. Now, this makes the black leadership down in South Central extremely angry because those black leaders down in South Central had tried to set up and buy those liquor stores and those 7-Elevens and those quickie marts. That happened all through the 1970s. However, because they applied to banks, blacks were definitely discriminated against in banking. And so they didn't get an opportunity to buy those stores and the Koreans did. And so then what happens is you have this big language in a quarter barrier. mile, turn right onto the I-10 West Santa Monica freeway ramp. You have this big gap in, in, in number one language between the Korean people and the black people. And so you guys remember, and look, this is, I'm not being racist, I'm just keeping it. Uh, I'm keeping it 100. So you guys remember, you buy something, you buy something. That used to be a big thing. And that where that came from is in the black community from, from South Central LA, where you buy something. And those Koreans who only learned a little bit of English, so they would tell the black people that came in because you're down in South Central. Remember, black folks have been cut off economically from the 1926 case of Corrigan versus Buckley. That will cut black folks out of economic prosperity for a hundred years, whether we like it or not. And redlining is also going to cut black folks out of any property that they buy. They're going to put a red line around it and say this property can't gain in value. And it doesn't gain in any value. So, so the U.S. government has has you know, and it's not you and me. It's it's probably not our brethren because most people who listen to me are commoners like I am. And so, so now the friction begins when 
the black leaders in South Central begin to vocally complain that they had tried to buy that same liquor store and they couldn't buy it. In 800 feet, turn right onto the I-10 West Santa Monica freeway ramp. And so then when you go into those convenience stores- Turn right onto the I-10 West ramp. And when you go into those liquor stores, go ahead, jump in there, buddy. When you go into those liquor stores in South Central, you have this big resentment because, you know, Black, because black folks don't have any in money. In a quarter mile, keep left at the fork to continue toward I-10 West, you're Santa gonna, Monica Freeway. If it, look, it's very simple. And There's this, a five minute slow down on I-10 West in three miles. You are still on the fastest route. This goes back to Jean-Jacques Rousseau's social contract. What I taught, everything that I ever talk about always ties, left dire at the fork. ties directly back to the founding of our country. So Jean-Jacques Rousseau's social contract, he states clearly, he states, Jean-Jacques Rousseau Continue states, for half a mile. he states clearly that if you create a social contract with private property, and that's exactly what I'm talking about here, about Koreans buying private property from the government, you're going to create a situation of haves and have nots. In a quarter mile, keep left at the fork, follow signs for I-10 And so West. what happens is, is you create that society of haves and have nots, but the black community has been trying to have, ooh, has been trying to have for so long and they can't get any property. And so when the Koreans come in and they Keep buy left at the fork. when they buy up those convenience stores and liquor stores throughout South Central, that causes a big huge rift between the Korean community and the black community of which they service. Now the Korean community who's only Continue been on I ten West for eight miles. Who's only been here since the sixty five immigration act at best. And so now in 1969, 1970, they've created inroads and bought all those buildings up. And so you have this really bad, bad friction between Koreans and blacks. And it's, it's really thick. I mean, in South Central, you can cut the tension with a knife out of the air. It is so thick. And so, so then what happens to, to spark the Rodney King riots it was police brutality for sure. We saw Rodney King get beaten, but that wasn't the whole crux of the Rodney King riots. It simply wasn't. The truth is, is that the 1965 Immigration Act played a gigantic role because then what happens is within those stores that I'm talking about, you have a very fragile situation in those liquor stores and convenience stores because the black community and Koreans are at each other's throat. They don't like each other. Lines have been drawn in the sand and they have this real animosity towards one another. And so here's the real crux of it. And I, I don't know if I'm gonna remember her name. Maybe my brain will kick it out. I wanna say Rubenstein, but that's not her last name. She was Jewish, but I can't remember her last name. What happens is a black woman goes into a liquor store, a quickie mart in South Central, and she goes to buy something and when she goes to pay the Korean woman in that quickie mart, she takes the money and she throws it in the Korean woman's face and she pays. And then she turns around to leave and that Korean shop owner, the, the woman Korean shop owner, she's like 55 or 60 years old. She shoots that black woman in the back of the head. That is the real catalyst and the real fire for the Rodney King riots that are gonna happen. And so it's on camera. It's all, you guys can look it up. Look it up, uh, the, I can't remember her name. So she shoots the black, the black woman. So it's a Korean woman who shoots a black woman in the back of the head and that black woman dies. So they watch the videotape. The Korean woman goes to court. She's found guilty of I think they found her guilty of manslaughter and not murder, even though I definitely think it was murder. It was a travesty of justice. I'm talking disgusting. You watch the videotape and you tell me if that's not cold-blooded murder, the Korean woman had felt disrespected and so she was gonna teach that black woman a lesson and shoot her in the back of the head and she murdered her. She should have got 20 years. She's actually found guilty in a court of law. I think it was of manslaughter though. I don't think it was for murder. And the judge, what the judge does right here in LA, 
It's a woman judge. She's Jewish. I can't remember her name. Someone will pop it in here. And and the 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 woman judge. And this is in 1992, I believe, 91 or 92. The the female judge who I can still picture her. I can picture her face perfectly. She sets aside. She she sets aside any prison time and deems that the Korean woman is found guilty time served because she sat in jail the whole time during the trial so the judge gave her time served for murder for murder now that that is the true catalyst for the Rodney King riots that are going to happen and the huge racial divide between the Korean community and the black community here in Los Angeles. And to this day, like I was saying earlier how I got on this story, the 10 freeway now segregates LA right down the middle. Black people are on south of the 10, white people are north of the 10, and then there's a little strip between that where the Asians, the Koreans, the Chinese live, where Chinatown and Koreatown, and Chinatown is downtown. So look, you'd have to live here a little while to truly understand the, the, the flavor, the nuance of this place. But just so you know, and someone can look up that judge's name who let that woman go on time served. And it might not have been time served. It might have been, uh, she might have got probation for 18 months or two years or something like that. But, but, but she was let go from murder. She was let off the hook. The judge, they went through the whole trial. It shows the video of the Korean woman shooting the black woman in the back of the head as she's walking away and they find her time served. Now, if you're not familiar with this, I'll just, just a real quick historical catch up here. Meanwhile, in the 1980s, the CIA has invented crack cocaine. The CIA invented crack cocaine. And then they distribute crack cocaine crack cocaine throughout South Central Los Angeles, right where I'm at right now, by, by giving crack cocaine to Rick Ross. Rick Ross is the biggest dealer of crack cocaine in the history of crack cocaine. You may have heard of Rick Ross from, from the Chappelle shows, funny skits where I'm, Rick, oh, that was Rick James. That's not Rick Ross. Sorry. <laughs> I guess, I, I guess I'm getting my Ricks confused. So but that's how it happens. So now throughout the 1980s, what the black community here in LA is seeing is that if you get arrested for crack cocaine, you're gonna do 20 or 30 years. Meanwhile, the law for having cocaine is two years. So you get 20 years for crack cocaine, you get two years for regular cocaine. And the black community, they have leaders in the black community who can see the facts. They check the court tape and they go, so Tyrone got 25 years while Tyler got two years and they both have the same substance in different forms. But the CIA had created crack cocaine to drive up the for-profit prison industry for Ronald Reagan's buddies who had invested in the for-profit prison industry called Civic Corps. So, so now the black community is used to seeing people get charged with crack cocaine and get 20 years. That's what, you don't have to be a rock, you don't have to be a constitutional scholar or a rocket scientist to look at the sentencing that Tyrone got and Tyler got and go, those are two different sentences. So that's where the two Americas really starts to present itself. And so when this Korean woman, when she's caught on camera shooting a woman in the back of the head as she walks away, the black woman who got shot in the back of the head was literally walking away. She's five feet away going the opposite direction. She shot dead center in the back of the head, bullet comes out the front. She shot right in the back of the head. So the black community can see that and then this white Jewish liberal judge gives the Korean gives the Korean woman time served and let me tell you something now it's open season on those Korean stores every Korean has killed a black woman and shot her in the back of the head not just that one every Korean store is now a prejudice store that might shoot your mother your sister your lover in the back of the head and it causes such consternation down there man I mean there is, it, 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 it's a powder cake. And so now what's gonna happen after that is we're gonna see the Rodney King beating 
and we're gonna see the trial moved, right? Here's another travesty of justice that people, if you don't really get into the history, into the, into the nuance of history, you don't know this. But then what they do, what the police do, because the police union, the Fraternal Order of Police has always had this super powerful legislative arm using the Fraternal Order of Police. All cops pay a little bit of their of their salary into the Fraternal Order of Police, which is the political arm where you get the guy in Arizona, Kavanaugh, who created SB 1300 and SB uh, 2019, uh, 2419, or is it 23? It doesn't matter. He, they create the body cam legislation that says that the police are ultimately the deciders of who gets to view the body cam. And that's what the Fraternal Order of Police do. And so in the Rodney King shoot, in the Rodney King beating, where they beat this guy senseless, crack him on the head over and over and over with a stick, the tension in Koreatown is at a fever pitch. And then they beat Rodney King, and the police are successful in getting the trial moved out of South Central LA, where the beating happened, up into the Northern Valley. And what I just say, LA is segregated right down the middle. Everybody south of the 10 is black, north of the 10 is white, a strip of Asians in the middle. And so when they successfully moved the trial from South Central LA up to the valley, that's all white people. That's all white people. You have a very, you got a peppering of black people up in, in the valley. And they moved the trial, not just to the valley, but way up in the valley, in Cop Central. I think they move it up to Valencia if I'm quite, sh if my history brain remembers quite correctly. Someone can correct me on that. But they move it up to Valencia. I think, I'm pretty sure. Someone double check that for me. But they move it to the waspiest, whitest, cop riddled place ever. And the jury is all white on the Rodney King. And of course, the cops are found not guilty. That, my friends, when, so now you have a Korean who shot a black woman in the back of the head as she's walking away. The tension between blacks and Koreans is at a fever pitch. The woman gets away with murder. The cops beat up Rodney King on camera, hitting him, kicking him, doing everything they can to take his brains and put him out of his mouth. And so, so now Rodney King's trial is moved to all white Northern California compared to Southern California. And I don't mean NorCal like Frisco, I mean right here in LA, Northern LA versus Southern LA. And so now what's gonna happen is, is the people, the, the moment, the very moment that the Rodney King verdict comes out, it's already been a free for all against any Korean shops in South Central. So you got black folks who are, the uneducated black folks are going into Korean shops and dropping bottles on the ground, cracking the windows, you know, doing stuff like that, the thuggish kind of stuff that the lowest educated people will do when they're when they're angry about injustice, which it is injustice. And so so now the moment the Rodney King verdict comes down, the very moment and and uh, I think his name was Reginald Denny. He's he's one of the first guys. And so the, they begin to light fires. They begin to light fires in trash cans all over South Central. And the, the chief of police back then I'm not gonna get his name, I, I know his name. I'm not gonna guess because I could guess wrong. So the chief of police back then, this guy is a cop sucker beyond all cop suckers. He's terrible, this guy's terrible. And he gets ran out of being chief of police, just so you know, right after the Rodney King riots. But they start burning trash cans in South Central right down in the middle of the city. And black folks are openly protesting by burning and beating uh, and, and beating up businesses. And so then what happens is, is it becomes a, a, a race keg, a, a race powder keg, where the black folks are gonna blame any white folks or any Asian folks for the dismay that they're dealing with down in South Central. So, and this is the problem when you, when you allow, a, when you create a segregated society. Now, we can argue back and forth about Jean-Jacques Rousseau's social contract. Jean-Jacques Rousseau's social contract is gonna say that you not only should have small democracies and people should sit around and discuss them, you should have homogeneous, homogeneous, so, I mean, I always say homogeneous, and I say the same word two different ways, it's homogeneous. But when you read it, it reads homogeneous, and I'm not classically smart, so I just, I say it two ways. It's homogeneous. Jean-Jacques Rousseau. In two miles, take exit 2A towards South Sentinel Avenue. Gotcha. So 
so Jean-Jacques Rousseau even presses for the idea that we should have homogenous societies of the same groups of people, meaning the same race. This was Jean-Jacques Rousseau's social contract, not mine. I didn't write it. So I'm just telling you what was printed in, in his book, The Social Contract. That's what he, pro he proposed. And so now, instead of the chief of police sending over units to put the fires in the trash cans out, he doesn't do that. He continues to do the TV talk circuit. And I'm talking about the critical, critical time when it's time for you to take action as a leader chief. But as you know, these guys are not very smart. They get promoted through the ranks by willing to follow orders, hurt people, and tow the thin blue line to cover up murders and rapes and travesties. And so this chief of police, was his name Gray? Can anybody tell me his name? Was his name Gray? I can't remember his dang name, it's driving me crazy. And I, I read this by reading three or four different um, thesis papers of uh, USC graduates who had written papers on, their thesis was on the, the immigration of the Korean people over to America using the 1965 Immigration Act. That's where I got so much information was by, in case you guys wanted to know, I didn't just re research the Rodney King riot, what I truly Half did. A mile. Take exit 284 South Sanilla Avenue. What I truly did is I read the thesis papers of students who wrote papers on the 1965 Immigration Act. That's what I read. The rest of the things that I know are based on, 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 on just the historical facts of the the Rodney King riots, which. Take which, exit 2A. Which fairly so. There should have been riots. I, I mean, not, not riots, but there should have been change and and. It's just so sad because, anyway, I don't want to lose focus here. So, in 800 feet, turn left onto South Sanilla Avenue. So now here's what's going to happen. Turn left onto South Sanilla Avenue. The, when the the trash cans are burning and and the chief of police who's doing TV shows and he's doing interviews based on the the Rodney King verdict instead of actually doing the policing, this guy's got to get his face on camera and he's got to talk about his role as a leader in LA. And if you go back and you watch some of those tapes of the interviews that he did, which I did, he he's on TV bragging about In a quarter mile turn left onto West Olympic Boulevard. He's on TV bragging about being a leader of LA. That's what he's doing. I'm not kidding. You go watch the interviews that he was doing when the Rodney King riots were just festering to explode and he's literally talking about what a great leadership community they have in policing. It's pretty, I almost did a video about it, but I want to stay focused on what I do know uh, very, very well. So, with this being said, so as... Turn it, left onto West Olympic he Boulevard, then, then it, turn right onto Sanilla Avenue. He then ignores the calls for his, his lower commanders are radioing him, the chief of police, and telling him, hey man, things are going bad down here. You know, we should do something. And he, and he, he gives some BS order like you know, secure the surrounding blocks or something like some, some lame slap dick order, some soft dick beta male kind of ordering. Because the truth is, is that sometimes you have to show force properly. And unfortunately the police in America don't know what that means at all. So, so then the next morning, then we see Reginald Denny, the semi truck driver who's driving through South Central and they pull him out of his car and beat him and nearly kill him. They brain damage him. They, I mean the lowest common, the, the lowest thinkers, the lowest level thinkers, because people who are high thinking individuals don't typically bash people in the head with bricks. So, so exponentially grown to the burning of dumpsters, to the burning of buildings. And whose buildings are gonna be targeted? The Korean buildings, where the previous black leaders tried to buy that business, but they couldn't buy it, and so they burn it to the ground. And now, LAPD has lost control. Just so you guys know, and this is just a caveat here, the police cannot control us. They have no control over us. The police are a, a light, light window dressing of Turn control. Right onto Avenue. The truth is, is that we the people are the sovereign of this country and we the people hold all of the power 
in this country. If in a we, quarter mile, turn left onto Colorado Avenue. If, if we unite together under one idea and one banner, these government people, be it cops, be it CIA, FBI, any of them, none of them can compete with the power of the sovereign of the American people. And a lot of people have this idea that, oh, you know, we wouldn't stand a chance if we fought the government. Let me tell you something. The government wouldn't stand a chance against us. They wouldn't stand a chance. They have zero chance of winning if the people united under one idea to say, we want to replace every single person in governorship or leadership. We want them all turn replaced. Turn left onto Colorado Avenue, then the turn left onto Berkeley Street. The government would have Street. zero chance of holding us back from doing anything we wanted to as an American populace. So the LAPD has lost control. I'm talking lost control to where they don't even want to, they didn't want to bring their cops out. They don't want to bring their police out. And by the way, this along with the Northern, the, the, the Valley up in the Valley here in, in Northern LA, we had had a bank robbery where the two guys who robbed the banks, I want to say the Figueroa brothers or the Hernandez brothers, I can't remember their names, but these, these brothers had robbed a bank in, in Northern LA in the Valley here and they used machine guns to rob the bank and they opened fire with machine guns all through the, the, the Valley in Northern Hollywood, that's where it was. Turn left onto Berkeley Street, then turn right. And so what happened here was, was the police are now going to try to create a justification for turn right, then turn left for militarizing the police. That's that's truly the the Rodney King riots along with the North Hollywood bank robbery are going to be the catalyst for the militarization of police, and that's going to start Head southeast on Berkeley Street toward Pennsylvania Avenue. And then that's gonna turn right onto Pennsylvania Avenue, then turn right. I'm sorry about the directions, guys. I'm going to pick up this uh, sample of indestructible paper here so you guys can take a look at the trifold, what it's gonna look like when it ships out here tomorrow. Ships out turn of LA. Turn right, then your destination will be on the left. When it ships out of LA here. Okay. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. I've only been to my factory over here. It's not my factory. I subly. I. I sublease this factory. Let me take a look. Head southwest on. So, I just hate this map. This map thing going off. Turn constantly. right, then turn there right. Is. There it is. Okay, I found it. We are here. Okay, so now I've got this indestructible piece of paper because I'm pulling off out of town here, and I won't be back for a minute. I'm going to be gone for a while, traveling, uh, doing some different. Head west towards Stanford Street. Let me kill, let me kill that map so you guys don't have to listen to it all the time. It take me four seconds. Sorry about that, guys. I apologize for the cut in and outs. I do apologize for that. And now let's go see. This is this is Image Square printing. There it is. There it is, right there. -hoo -hoo -hoo. There it is. I'm looking at it. This is this is where you guys get your posters that I ship out. If anybody ever orders a hard copy poster, I get it from this this place right here. Okay, there it is. There it is. This is, this is what you guys will get in the mail. These are gonna ship out Monday. So I, I hate to do it, but this is indestructible paper. You can, you can, you can, you can curl this, you, you can't tear this, you can't rip this. So this is the trifold coming out on Monday. I think we've, we, about 100 people have, have got the trifold. So it's coming out Monday. And this paper is indestructible paper, which is, you, you, can't, you can't ruin this. And this is the reason why I drove all the way over here. And now I'm on my way to Phoenix. So I'm on my way to Phoenix. And now I will replace my trifold. And just a quick shout out to Tyler and Gavin, the, the two guys who collaborated with me on this to get this done. Is X Factor in here? Now that I pulled over and stopped, I can take a look at the comments. Roll call, you guys hit number one and let me know where you're from. Let me know where you guys are from. Yeah, I, X Factor, good to see you, brother. I'll give you a call from the road. Um, but this is your indestructible trifold. I just got it done. I just got this done. I have been working on this and trying to shoot content for this the entire week this week, and I'm late getting out of town to go see the tech team. Tack Coin will be done on Tuesday. It looks like on Tuesday we'll have Tack Coin coming out, which is exciting as well because then there's a number of people who I've seen being arrested that I would gladly, with the proper backing, press civil litigation for their case 
because that's what TACCOIN does is we hire the attorneys and we bail you out of jail to make sure that if you if your rights are violated that that we got your back that's what TACCOIN's all about that's the whole point of TACCOIN so that's coming out but if you guys haven't got your trifold I only have 200 so I've sold a uh, hundred so far so we have 200 of these and guys I make about 10 to 12 dollars profit on each one of these they cost 25 but the print shop takes about half the money and that includes shipping and handling and everything else so so we've we've sold a hundred so far meaning we've made about a thousand bucks I paid Tyler I paid Gavin I paid for that shoot yesterday so I think we're about 150 positive on this right now which is great which is great and the biggest thing is though it gives you uh, a, a way if they say let me talk you can then show them this or you can read them this and you'll be able to uh, it's gonna help you so much because you know my mouth gets dry when I talk to hundreds of people and those are just people my hands start to shake a little bit when I get around cops because they, they're at my back and I'm not I'm not I'm not always sure they're not gonna attack me and grab me so what this does is when they say hey I'm gonna you know I smell marijuana instead of you trying to come up with exactly what to say when they say I smell marijuana you can simply read this to them the Commonwealth versus Bar 2021 you can read this to them or you can simply say you can't search my car because you smell marijuana and here's the holding you can just put this right in their hand if you want to and then you no longer even have to say that you plead the fifth because you can just open this up to right here on the lower right hand side where it says you have to answer the, the cop will say you have to answer my question what the cop says is in blue is you have to you have to answer and then instead of you answering you simply point out that it's a fifth amendment right to remain silent and that's 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 what this does so you don't have to speak you can just point you can literally just go and that's the whole reason why i made this <sighs> okay 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 so, all right, now I'm gonna get on the road and I'm heading to Phoenix. So I'll be in Phoenix in seven hours. I'm gonna be five hours late. <laughs> I was up all night trying to get as much content in that cop uniform shot as I could possibly produce because I know that I, when, I, when I don't have that cop outfit, I'm gonna think of 20 additional skits I could have done in that cop outfit. I fell asleep in full cop uniform last night producing content showing what how cops actually are it, there's some funny stuff in there and then I did a five-minute bit where I make fun of all the youtubers as as sergeant Richard head as captain Richard head I'm captain Ri oh no I think I'm captain you I think that was the name I finally went with I started off with captain Richard head and then I changed it to captain you and that's pretty funny that's pretty funny so all right, I'm on my way to Phoenix. If anybody's in Phoenix, let me know. Hopefully the war the judge didn't put out a pocket warrant for me for for streaming the the court hearing, but when you read section 122.1, uh, you can read that it doesn't say anything about streaming. It talks about setting up equipment in a courtroom and getting 2 days notice to set up your equipment. I didn't have to set up any equipment to stream the court case. And there was nothing in there that said I couldn't stream a public hearing to the people who want to hear about my public hearing. It was my public hearing. It was me being charged. It is me being charged. The judge did find me guilty, right? So I can't wait to see how indestructible this paper is. I want to see people who wad this thing up and put it in their pocket and pull it back out and wad this up and put it in their pocket and wad it up and put it in your pocket. I want to know what this thing looks like when it really gets crumpled when an auditor carries this from from house to, from from location to location and then you know is that a threat it says right here are you threatening me and then it says Chaplinsky versus the united versus new hampshire in 1942 clearly states that fighting words are if i call you a racketeer or if i say you're a goddamn fascist those are fighting words not me asking you to meet me at the gym for a healthy round of mma officer so <laughs> Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. There, there's just so you guys know, and then I'll get out of here. In my lifetime, I've been both rich and poor. I've had more money in my account than I can spend this month, this week, this year. I've, I've had that. And then I've had it where I have no money, not a dollar. I can't buy a can of tuna fish. I am so broke, I can't pay attention. And 
the funny part is, is that you always notice the happiness factor in your life, how happy you are. Where's my level of happiness, right? And this job of creating products and selling them to keep doing what I'm doing, I've never been happier in my entire life. I've never been more fulfilled. My heart has never been more content than doing exactly what I'm doing now. So for that reason, I will never stop. And those of you who are with me, we will never, ever stop. We don't ever stop until I don't have to show a cop this pamphlet, until my rights are respected, until being a cop requires four years of education. And I'm not talking about a college, I'm talking about four years of educating police how to treat people properly. We create a new penalization system that is based on education and security. We become an executive of a state so that we can implement those police changes if they're not openly accepted and they won't be. So I've never been more fulfilled in my entire life. I've never been more fulfilled in my whole life. And remember, I've been producing TV shows with lots of pretty little Hollywood bunnies on there and enjoying the, the, the fruit of the nectar of living in a society like this one. So that's the best way to say it. <laughs> So, uh, it's been a good time. Anybody in Phoenix, hit me up. Anybody in Phoenix, I'll be in Phoenix for three or four days. Then I'm going to head to Vegas to see my family for a couple of days and then boom, off to Texas. So that's, that's my schedule over the next few days. If anybody's in Phoenix, let me know. And, uh, uh I will see you, Mr. Topper. I'm sure you won't see this, but I'll see you, Mr. Topper. I'll give you a text, let you know I'm coming into town. Uh, I am bringing the t-shirts and sweatshirts with me. I'm going to do a fire sale tomorrow. And people, you buy them or you don't, and then that's it. Tomorrow's the last day. I'm not, I'm not going to have sweatshirts and t-shirts up anymore. I just can't, I can't, I can't spend the time doing it. I can't spend the time doing it. All right, let's, nothing but love for you guys. Thanks for coming by. Let me talk. I appreciate it. Hopefully you guys learned something from this long lecture. We're coming just up on an hour. And so hopefully everybody's learned something. And uh, you guys, make sure you go pick up my trifold. I only have 200. I ordered to th this paper right here, you have to order this paper specifically. And so I ordered 200 sheets of eight and a half by 11 and I've sold a hundred of them and I haven't shipped one yet. We ship these on Monday. So if you guys haven't got a trifold, make sure you get one for your visor. And I'm gonna replace this one in my visor here. And I'm gonna put this one up in there so you don't have to speak when the police pull you over. All right, I'm gonna get the flock out of here. Love you guys, man. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. All right, I'm out of here. Later, Gator.